What are we doing today guys? So today we've got a Renault Master with a faulty engine ECU. We attended this one, um, it had intermittent communication. Um, basically, it's a 2009 Renault Master and you can, you can swap these ECUs very easily with a top done. But unfortunately in this case, um, the original ECU is not powering up long enough. Um, for us to get the, the data off it as soon as you manage to get in um, to actually get into the actual ECU to communicate with it it cuts you off as soon as we plug this one back in which is a donor unit the customer got what happens is you can get communication all the time but unfortunately um, the immobiliser um, is flashing now what we're going to do here is I've took a, a read of the uh, EEPROM on the original one and we are getting a, a good read on that so the EEPROM is okay so and compared to that one it's the same file size and so on so basically what I'm going to do is just swap the EEPROMs over the ECUs are matching more or less so um, that should be alright on that side so I'm going to swap the two EC, uh, ECU EEPROMs over and that should be as good to go with this ECU, it'll just obviously need resealed um, and that'll be us. So just stuck a wee bit of flux along the legs there just waiting on the station heating up and that'll come off very easy so plan is take the the good EEPROM or the EEPROM, both of them are good but we'll take the original EEPROM that we need for it to actually start the car take that off the original board stick it on the used board um, just make sure everything's clean. Clean up all the sealant, reseal it. But before we do that, we're going to plug it into the car, make sure it starts. Yeah, I'm pretty sure, I'm, I'm pretty positive I'll get away with just doing the, uh, it's an ST95320 EEPROM chip. I'm sure I'll get away with just doing um, the EEPROM side of it, but we'll find out. And if it comes to it, I'll seal the ECU back home and let it, let it cure and then we'll refit it to the vehicle on a further date. We're just heating up the legs there, and this should come off fairly easy. Obviously you want to make sure that you're marking um, the, right, the correct orientation of the chip, you don't want to put it in upside down because that will not work so in this case the the Mark ST is facing at the bottom so easy enough to to remember so we'll just give it a nice wee heat up here it's already lifting up there we go you can see there I've just sat that aside so that's our original board we can move that out of the way and focus on the donor board. Just keep applying that heat, there we go, it's lifted off. So there's another chip there, and again, don't drop it. We've got a habit of dropping things. So after a bit of a clean up later, we've got the chip sitting on the board. Just letting the solder station cool down. Um, we'll get this temporarily fitted into the car, see if it's going to do the job. I've just gave it a wee bit of a clean there, just with alcohol, just to make sure there's no other. I mean, this is a, it's a no clean flux anyway, but it's just always good to get that sticky sort of material out of the road. You can see it's soldered on there. I've looked at all the pins through there and they look absolutely perfect so we'll get this fitted to the car we'll see you then so guys we're back at this van it's not sealed up yet uh, the, uh, the engine ECU is just loosely placed and um, with two two screws across there just basically so it can't shot against anything um, I'm going to go and fit this ECU I'll just need to watch I don't want to get this place on film because they don't like that sort of stuff so that's fair enough so I'll get this ECU placed on there. 
you can see there, the engine ECU is in place. Just the battery's completely stone dead on this, which isn't going to help. I don't really like jump starting or putting a jump pack on them, but that is what it is. Um, just need to get this done quickly because I've got to finish at a certain time of the day. So, so we'll stick a negative on there and try and stick a positive somewhere on here. Right, so, see there, is it ready to jump? We don't know. We'll just let that sit. We'll see if it's ready to jump start. I don't think it will be. We'll maybe need to force it into a jump start. There we go. Let's see if this will start now. This has been a van that's been ongoing for a long time. A few different places have had it, so fingers crossed. Ah, oh, look at that. Perfect. A few wee warning lights up. I've got the coil light on, but that's probably been on before. But that is absolutely awesome. The van's started up. Let's just see if it'll... Yeah, so we're on 172,000 mile on this van. There's a couple of wee noises, but this has been sitting for a while. That's absolutely perfect. That is absolutely perfect. So we'll get the scanner on it. We'll let it run for a bit. We'll get the scanner on it. Um, and see if there's any other issues. So we'll see what faults we've got in the injection unit. Or the engine ECU, I should say. So we've got misfires, which are memory. Preheating unit, which we're not bothered about. ECU internal electric fault, yeah, electronic fault, main relay circuit relay cut out too early. I think these are going to be um, past faults from that other engine ECU. So we'll see if that goes off. So long story short, guys, I had a nightmare. I had to end up using the auto fix. The top done wasn't doing it right. So Autel wins with this, um, but I had to <coughs> re-enter the injection codes because there were seven seven A's so something must have happened with that um, EEPROM when I was changing it over it's lost that memory um, but as you can see no other lights on happy days thanks for watching see you next time